Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Deepak Gadwal, Associate Professor, Electronics and Communication Department, Chandigarh Engineering College, Chandigarh Group of Colleges. And my area of domain is microprocessor, microcontroller, specially embedded systems. And today I will give you lecture on ARM processor, which is LBC 2148IC, which is a Philips IC and which is now evolving as a major great player in today's world. As you know that embedded system is a combination of a hardware and software and we have seen various embedded processors for an example 8051, we have seen big processors and now we are actually working on 8ARM 802148IC which is a Philips IC and almost in every world atmosphere, this IC dominates 90 to 95% of the commercialization and privatization industry. Everybody nowadays is using ARM 248 IC because of its enhanced feature, its enhanced database, its enhanced memory points, and all together. And this ARM IC processor is one of the major great player at the moment. So today in this lecture, I will give you a brief introduction about ARM 2148 IC processor. This ARM stands for Advanced Risk Machine (RISC). So Advanced Reduce Instruction Set Computing Machine, which is LPC 2148 IC which is basically ARM 7 IC developed by the Philips, right? So, let us move further to the next slide. Now, almost every one of us using the ARM processor. As I already said that in any commercialization or in any thing, ARM is one of the factor which is now working, right? So, ARM, almost everybody of us is using ARM. And ARM is basically using in various mobile phones, in handheld organizations, in calculators, in laptops, everyone of using this ARM processor. Now the first prototype of ARM came in 1985 and it became highly successful because of its wide application. So in 1985, first ARM processor prototype came and ARM code is not a single code basically, it is a family of code. ARM is not a single core, it is a family of core. We have ARM 7, we have ARM 8, we have ARM 9, 10, 11, and so on. Right? And what is the main crux of ARM processor? Basically, LPC 2148. As already in its definition, ARM is basically uh, specified that ARM, Advanced Reduced Instruction Set Computing Machine. So, ARM is basically a reduced instruction set computing machine, right? So this risk, this risk is basically one of the factor which is the crux of ARM processor. It is not based on SIS processor. ARM processors are based on risk philosophy. Now let us move further and first of all, uh, let us understand that what is basically the factors which are basically working on. Okay, then what is a risk design philosophy, right? ARM core uses risk philosophy. As I've already said that ARM core basically reduces the risk philosophy, right? As I've already said that ARM core basically uses the risk philosophy. So ARM core uses risk philosophy. These are simple instructions which are fast but only take one machine cycle. What is risk? Risk only takes one machine cycle to execute actually. Right? So ARM using risk philosophy as I have already said. They are fast but only using one machine cycle. They only use one machine cycle to execute in ARM process. Right? And the aim of using reduce risk is to reduce the hardware complexity. As we know that we have different processors lined up in the market and we need any processor which is simplified in circuit, complexity is less and the applications are more. So ARM is the processor which is basically dealing with this that 
hardware complexity is very much reduced and it has an intelligent software also. It has an intelligent software also. And basically, this is the ARM processor that in RISC architecture, as ARM is a RISC based architecture, the compiler is of great complexity because it has to deal with various advanced applications. And processor is a very simplified one. Processor is a very simplified one. So basically, a compiler is a complex one. Processor is a simpler one. On the other hand, in the CISC processor, compiler is a simpler one, but processor is of great complexity. Right? So ARM is a kind of a feature that in ARM basically the processor is basically the simpler one. The processor is the simpler. Now let us move further. What are the major designs of this architecture? Right? If we are basically designing any ARM processor based on the risk. Then what are the key points we have to look for? First is ARM is having a reduced number of instructions here, right? Since it is based on RISC processor and every RISC processor has a reduced number of instructions here. Then it takes single cycle to execute any instruction, right? ARM processor basically takes a single cycle to execute instruction and each instruction is of fixed length. Each instruction is of fixed length in the ARM and often Sys instructions take variable size and take many cycles to execute, right? So these are basically the design goals. Second, ARM processors which are based as a RISC processor are based on the fundamentals of pipelines, right? Every ARM processor is based on the pipelines. Pipelines means that at one machine cycle, we have different execute or fed cycles executed at same point of time. We have three cycles. One is fetch, then execute and then organize. So, at one machine cycle, the processor right, executes two tasks at one point of time. This is pipeline. So, uh, in processor of instruction, basically the instruction is broken into smaller units and many units work out in a parallel way. Many units work out in a parallel way. So, these are basically the features. And ideally, pipeline advances by one side in each cycle, right? Next, what are the other features? So, other feature of this architecture is that our ARM processor basically is using parallel chapter also. What is a parallel chapter? If I want to add two numbers and then I want to rotate it, so basically, uh, using first of all add instruction and then using a rotate instruction will take very much time. So I have used a parallel chapter in which one instruction goes to a leave straight away, the other instruction goes to a parallel chapter. So any rotate instructions will be done by this parallel chapter, and the output of this instruction will come to a leave and execute it in very successfully, right? So I don't want need to execute two instructions, rotate instruction and add instruction. I have a parallel shifter and parallel shifter will do its part uh, simultaneously. Then what are the design philosophies of ARM architecture? If I am, uh, as I have already said that we are dealing with ARM and ARM is basically dependent on the risk processor. ARM is following risk methodologies. So, ARM basically design is in that portable embedded system, right? We are basically using a portable embedded system that this embedded system is a portable one, can be placed at various high advanced applications. Then reduce power consumption. Power consumption should be reduced at that point of time. <coughs> then high core density. High core density is one of the factors which is very important. Then low cost memory. Memory should be low cost. And size should be reduced. As I've already said that when with the advancement of application, everybody needs that the size of the processor should be reduced, but the uh, size should be reduced, but application should be more. So ARM design philosophy basically aim at portable embedded system, power consumption should be reduced, high core density should be there, low cost memory should be there, and size should be minimized. So these are the design philosophies on which ARM is based. <coughs> then ARM is basically also following thumb instruction set. It is basically a 16-bit thumb instruction set. 
ARM processor is basically a 32 bit processor. This LPC 2148 IC is a 32 bit processor. So we have basically 32 bit uh, instruction set. But at some point of time, if we want to use the same processor for a 16 bit instruction set, it can also be executed. And when the ARM processor is working on a 16 bit instruction set, it is working as a thumb 16 bit instruction. So thumb 16 bit instruction set, our ARM processor works in a thumb 16 bit instruction set as well as 32 bit instruction set also. Then it is a closest architecture, right? Then strength of ARM is very more and the raw material which is used has a very less power consumption, speed is more, right? So these are basically the design philosophies of ARM architecture. Now more about what are the basic more advantages of R. So the basic more advantages of R is that basically this R is basically uh, based on a thumb processor as I already said, thumb processor. So thumb 16 bit instruction is it, it is following. Then uh, it is it has DSP instruction. DSP instructions are also executed in right. So uh, this is basically the processor. Now, <coughs> okay. Now, what is the example? Now, let us see the example or the architecture of a ARM-based embedded device. This is an ARM-based embedded device. So, in ARM-based embedded device, this is basically the processor. This is an ARM processor, which is LPC two one four eight IC disk based. Processor. As an earlier slide, I have mentioned about the various advantages of this ARM processor and what are the key features of ARM processor. So this is a ARM processor. It is same like any CPU controller. It will execute the data based on the instruction given to this processor. Then we have interrupt controller and memory controller. We have two controllers. Interrupt controller will basically look for all the interrupt signals which will come to the ARM processor. Interrupt signal will look for all the interrupt signals which comes to ARM processor. And we have a memory controller. Memory controller will look for the different associated memories attached to it. For an example, we have RAM, we have SRAM, dash RAM, DRAM. So these are the external memories. These are the external memories. Or uh, external memories in the sense that they are basically on the chip. So memory controller is looking for the in and out data to these memories, right? Then interrupt controller. Then we have two types of buses. We have two types of buses. We one we have a HB a HB bus which is ARM high performance bus. Then we have APB which is ARM peripheral bus. So we have two buses. One is ARM high performance bus and one is ARM peripheral bus. ARM peripheral bus is responsible for connecting the ARM processor with different peripherals and ARM high performance bus is responsible for connecting this bus with different uh, external devices with different external devices then we have obviously we have real time clock the real time clock is responsible for <coughs> synchronization of that it will send the clock signal and every signal or every data which is basically in and out will follow the clock. Then Ethernet, timers and counters which are responsible for providing any delay. Then we have serial UART. Serial UART is basically responsible for universal asynchronous receiver and transmission of data. Okay, so basically this is an example of an ARM embedded system. As I have already said that we have an ARM processor. Then there are different memory controllers, interrupt controllers, memory controllers are looking for different memories which are associated with it. Then we have interrupt controllers which is looking for different interrupt signals. We have two types of buses, ARM high performance bus and ARM uh, peripheral bus. And Ethernet, counter and timer, real time clock, serial UART, these are the peripherals, right? So this is an example of ARM based memory system. Or if you look for the architecture of ARM based experiment, this is one of the best examples. Now let us move further.
Now, if I look about ARM processor, so ARM processor is what? ARM processor is responsible for processing of instruction based on the data and instruction given. So, this is the key factor of ARM processor. Then controllers, basically we have two types of controllers, interrupt controller and memory controller. Memory controller is looking for all the memories which are associated with the controller. Interrupt is looking for all the interrupt signals, processing of all the interrupt signals. Then there are different peripherals, there are different buses. Buses is used basically to communicate between different parts of the processor. This is the architecture. Now, if I talk about the bus technology, then what kind of a bus ARM technology or ARM processor is following? ARM processor is following two kinds of buses. One is ARM high performance bus or ARM peripheral bus, right? So basically, the peripheral component integrated PCI bus is already followed by 86 processor, and this bus is basically external or off chip. And in contrast, embedded devices uses on chip bus. If I talk about any embedded device, they basically use the on chip bus, which is internal to the chip. This bus is basically internal to chip, and it allows different devices to be interconnected with the ARM board. It allows different devices to be interconnected with the ARM board. Now, build. if I talk about the width of the ARM processor, so if I am using ARM processor as 32 bit, if I am using ARM processor as 32 bit, then 8 bit memory I am using, or 16 bit memory I am using, or 32 bit memory I am using, I require 4 cycles, 2 cycles, and 1 cycle to execute any instruction. If I am using 16 bit thumb processor, I require 2 cycles, 1 cycle, and 1 cycle. So, this is basically the width of uh, uh, the memory. Okay, so what is the memory bit? It is number of bits the memory can assess. Number of bits the memory can assess. They can be 8, they can be 16, or they can be 24. So, based on two instruction sets, one is ARM 32 <coughs> bit instruction set, and one is thumb 16 bit instruction set, we have different memories, and accordingly, accordingly, it can be executed. Now, what are the registers? What are the registers? The registers are basically the storage element. The registers are storage element of any processor. So we have 16 registers R1, R2, R3, R4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. These are the general purpose registers. These are the general purpose registers. And what are the special functions? R30, which is stat pointer. Stat pointer is a special purpose register. R40, which is a link register. It is a special function register. Then R15. R15 is basically the program counter. So, in any ARM processor, we have 16 registers. Out of 16 registers, we have 13 registers, which are general purpose registers. And they basically aim at storage of bits. Stack pointer, program pointer, and link registers are basically the special functions. Then basically we have two registers also, two places for register, one is CPSR and undefined. So CPSR and undefined registers are also basically the storage registers. Now we have general program register, we can either hold data or address, right? All the registers are of 32 bit length, basically. Right, and R13 is a special function register which is used as stack pointer. 14 is used as a link register. Right, link register is the one in which the core puts the return address. Okay, if I if it goes to any subroutine address or if it goes to any other address, so this is basically a subroutine address at which it has to come again. And R15 is a counter register. So this is all about the register. Now uh, let me tell you about what are the modes of the processor. Now this is CPSR. This is one of the most important register of uh, ARM processor. So in CPSR, this is a particular register. CPSR is current program statement register and this is a 32 bit register. Out of this 32 bit register, from 0 to 8. We have basically a control register. Then from 8 to 
27. A to 27, we have extension register, status, and flag. And on 28 bit, 29 bit, 30 bit, and 31 bit, we have additional flags. On these, we have traditional flags. We have additional flags. So basically, this is a 32 bit register. 0 to 4 will tell about the modes. In the next slide, I will tell you about what are the modes of the processor. From 0 to 5, we have modes, which will set the processor modes. Then, T stands for pump state, R and F stands for interrupt mask. Then, extension status will tell you about that. Then, these are the flags. Okay, 0, carry, auxiliary carry, and non return position. So, these are the flags. Right? So, this is basically a CPSR register. Okay, these are the registers. Now, what are the processor modes? What are the modes in which our ARM processor will tell about? ARM processor basically works in a privilege and non privilege mode. Privilege mode is one in which we have full read write process. Privilege mode is the one in which we have full read write process. Non privilege mode is only allows read access to the control key. Of the CPSR, however, it allows the read write access to the conditional flag. So there are seven modes basically. There are seven modes out of which six are privilege mode and one is non privilege mode. Right? We have seven modes, six are privilege and one is non privilege mode. Right? Out of this, we have basically six privilege mode and one non privilege mode. Now, what are the six privilege mode about? Pass, interrupt request, interrupt request, supervisor, and undefined. They are the privilege mode, and the user mode is non privilege, right? So, modes means privilege and non privilege. One is non privilege, and six are privilege. What are the six? Abort, fast, fast interrupt request, interrupt request, supervisor, and undefined. They are privilege mode, and it is a non privilege mode. Okay, next. Now, what is a mode mode? When any processor fails to assess memory, it goes in a abort mode. Fast interrupt request and interrupt request are when any interrupt signal comes, the processor goes into this mode. Super mode is then when you reset any processor, it goes into a super mode. System mode is a special version of user mode that will allow the full read write assess. Then undefined mode and user mode. Now, <coughs> basically, you look at this. These are the various modes abort mode, fast interrupt request, interrupt request, supervisor, system, undefined, and user. These are the seven modes of the processor. We have privilege mode and these modes, right? So, these are the abbreviation of these modes. All are privilege mode, but in the last one, last one is not privilege mode. All are the privilege mode, but last one is not privilege mode. If I talk about the modes, if I talk about the bits, so we have one, all zeros, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, all zero, one, one, zero, one, one. So these are basically the bits which we need to reset in CPSR, which we need to reset in CFSR. And accordingly, we set the bits, the processor will go into that mode. Okay, these are the registers. These are the registers of CPSR. So, in any of the mode, if I am using user or system, if my processor is in user or system mode, all the registers are working. All the registers are working. If I am using user and system. If I am using fast interrupt request mode, only RA to R14 are working. Rest are not working. CPSR is also working. If I am using interrupt request mode, 13 and 14 is working. If I am using supervisor mode, then R13 and R14 are working. If I am using undefined mode, R13 and R14. If I am using award mode, they are working. So basically, this is what you call as band. 
This is what you call as band balance, right? Okay, next. So, uh, as I have already said, there are 37 registers, 20 are hidden at program different levels. These registers are bank registered and they can be activated at any point. Okay, thank you all. So, this is a brief introduction about ARM LPC 2148 IC, in which I have covered about the why we need ARM technology, what are the features of ARM technology, what is the uh, criteria of designing any embedded system. What is the architecture of ARM technology, its registers, its memory and its structure. So, thank you all. Thank you for watching.